Most of the things you plan don't go as predicted. This is always the case in life. Now that we're almost a year since the Rona struck the planet, let's be real, things have changed. Welcome back to Gundam Technology, let's get into it. 2019 ended with a bang, and it bid goodbye to us with tons of promises. Fast forward to our year ender, pretty much everything's cancelled. This, however, is an understatement, and just as our heroes from our favorite mecha series, we just have to rise up to the challenge life gives us. I can somehow see a silver lining towards the planetary tragedy, because we must. Hence, I give you several things to look forward to for the next year after the opening of the Gundam factory in Yokohama. The 2020 Tokyo Olympics was hinted at with so much hype, and I was looking forward to it since its announcement after the 2012 and 2014 Olympics. I expected something huge, something dramatic and operatic, like a callback from cult classics like Akira and Mobile Suit Gundam, something that the London Olympics has done with Mr. Bean and Voldemort's appearance on their final day in 2012. And yes, there were hints of a 4K Blu-ray distribution of Akira and a life-size mobile suit Gundam, similar to the first two Odaiba statues. Hence, this vision will be scrapped for now. Except that the life-sized and mobile Gundam as the start of the legacy that Bandai and Sunrise will leave on their 40th anniversary. This year, we saw the rise of tech companies letting their microtransactions lead the way for businesses to function. Here we see the rise of people getting new hobbies like watching new shows and online streaming services, or picking up a musical instrument, sometimes even purchasing a new transportation vehicle. We can expect Bandai co-collaborating with companies like Amazon, Fender, or Crunchyroll to promote Gundam to people at home. This can go with new Gunpla, a new Gundam series, and even iconic Gundam motives on a ukulele, just like what Billie Eilish or the Neon Genesis Evangelion collaboration with Fender did this year. The rise of streaming services would be hinting at a new era of marketability of anime towards a new platform than cable TV or local TV stations. Hence, this will be an opportunity for Sunrise to promote a new futuristic mecha anime, or a redux of their amazing catalog of animated series. We can look at the Niu and Bandai collaboration as a future endeavor for Bandai to collaborate in the rise of the robotics industry in Japan. Scholarship programs, e-learning, and charity events can leeway an opportunity for Gundam to make its mark on the Japanese youth as a whole. This can also open the doors for Gundam to propel themselves in countries that are willing to invest in space travel. Additionally, as Gundam being considered as a visionary project, the Gundam Yokohama factory can serve as an opportunity to showcase new innovations being a museum of Gundam and a function room or an events venue for the Department of Education of Japan co-collaborating with other schools outside the country. Regardless, the opening of the Gundam Yokohama factory will propel their name towards new marketing opportunities in the tech and medical field. I also mentioned Amazon as a good platform for logistics. Since not everyone can roam freely on the planet just yet, Bandai will likely leverage their logistics services for their toy line, especially Gonpla to Jeff Bezos, Jock Ma to local businesses for easier transactions to consumers. I can also see the rise of YouTubers and the anime community in general. More of us are creating content, and the competition is getting steeper by the minute. This is the rise of content creation for YouTube, Crunchyroll, and Netflix, to name a few. The lesser people go out, the more opportunities there are for the creative industry as well. We can expect the mecha community to grow larger by the minute as well. Content like Evangelion, Code Geass, Listener, and Darling in the Franks, just to name a few, are being exposed to wider audiences. New avenues for futuristic anime to flourish and get recognition in the future. To add, Sakura Wars had a decent anime as well this year. Speaking of Gundam anime, I think there are new ones on Q4 next year. It will be a nice addition to the wide lore that Gundam has developed throughout the years and to more years to come. And we barely hit the American market yet. In America, 
the impact of this Gundam feat will leverage their Transformers, their Marvel and Voltron and Power Rangers to have a callback towards Gundam's 40-year influence. Oh, come on. I know you saw it on Big Hero 6 and Into the Spider-Verse. The Yokohama Factory will just be a start. Imagine, a Gundam-themed amusement park. Now that would be bananas. It would be nice if they had that. If it's possible, since Bandai loves co-collaborations, a Disney collab would be a nice addition to promoting Gundam to a mainstream audience. If they can have a Zaku-themed Sanrio doll, or a revival of Spider Sentai, maybe even a Penny Parker co-collaborating with Gundam, now that would be a nice thing to see. Speaking of Spider Sentai, the Sentai market will also be highlighted by this feat because Gundam is one of the biggest anime series in the world, and the Sentais, the Ultramans, and the Kaijus would be an amazing co-collaboration that is a must-see in the future. Because we have a huge functional Gundam, a Gojira and an Ultraman would be a nice thing to see soon. Given that Legendary Pictures had a successful run with Godzilla and Pacific Rim. Additionally, a close and relative product to Gunpla is the video game industry. This is the year Cyberpunk 2077, clearly a Gundam-influenced game, and Genshin Impact became household names. We can see it as an opportunity for a newer, better Gundam game in the works. In 2018, Fire Emblem Three Houses was a nominee for Game of the Year as well. The gameplay is um, similar to Super Robot Wars, the mecha-strategic RPG game several anime series. Oh, not to mention, Sakura Wars also released a decent game recently too. Given these examples, we can also guarantee that an increase of Gundam endorsed products like cars, motorcycles, supermarket products, fast food and health supplements among others will have perfect product placement for Gundam. Not to mention that they can have go collaboration for online purchases towards YouTube and anime content creators for coupon cards for promotion. You can also take notice that Gundam has a Gundam cafe with tons of amazing Gundam-themed products. Who knows if they would launch a Krusty Krab fast food line after 40 years of their legacy. They can serve traditional food with a twist in their food line, huh? There is also a wide array of music and movie celebrities who happen to be Gundam fans. It would be nice for Andrew WK or Mike Shinoda from Lincoln Park to co-collaborate with Gundam again. I hear that a specific residential candidate was a huge Gundam fan as well. I think this would be a nice future topic we can discuss soon. Hmm. Looks like I have that topic in store for you, huh? If you like that idea, give us a thumbs up and let us know in the comment section. And make sure that you subscribe to our channel too. If you enjoyed this video, you should definitely check out my other video called Mobile Suit Gundam vs Extreme Maxi Boost On character highlights. As part of Gundam's celebration of its 40th anniversary, since the very first episode of Mobile Suit Gundam was aired on Japanese television, the media franchise has decided to launch a series of events. They also released a few new versions of the beloved Gundam classic model kits. Fans have been raving to see what to expect in the celebration of 40 years of Gundam's existence. For the 40th anniversary, we will cover one of the franchise's premium products, Mobile Suit Gundam vs. Extreme, the latest Gundam video game. Join me for the updates on one of Mobile Suit Gundam's video game lines. Stay connected, stay up to date.